Hi guys, how's it going? Ivano here with another video and today we're going to learn about the basic mechanics of the game, the different types of abilities in the game and how damage is calculated. A lot of this is unfortunately hidden in the game and the game itself does not do a particularly good job at explaining these things. So I thought I'd give it a try. Now I want to mention that I did not come up with this. In fact, most of the info in this video comes from the research of some very diligent theory crafters of the past. So I'll put a link in the description and you can check them out. First of all, different types of abilities. So you have instant abilities such as Rocket Punch. There are casted abilities such as Tracer Missile, where the damage will go off after a certain cast time. And you have channeled abilities such as Deadly Onslaught. For PvP in general, instant abilities are the best ones because they cannot be interrupted and they do not have any delay between you pushing the button and the damage going off. Next up, as you can see, of course, some abilities have a cooldown, such as Rocket Punch. So now it's on cooldown, I can't use it anymore. While other abilities, such as Magnetic Blast, you can use based on a global cooldown. What does it mean, global cooldown, if you have never heard that before? It basically means that I, while I can spam Magnetic Blast, so I can use it one after each other, you will see this little animation on my bar. This is roughly 1.4 seconds with my current gear meaning that I cannot use Magnetic Blast more often than that. But of course, there are some exceptions. Some abilities such as Shoulder Cannon do not respect the global cooldown and you can use them at the same time as another ability. This is true also for most defensive cooldowns and offensive cooldowns in the game. So for example, when I'm on my power attack, I can use Energy Shield, Explosive Fuel and Thermal Detonator at the same time. Finally, some abilities in the game do damage to a single target, actually most of them, and few abilities in the game will do AoE damage or area of effect that can do damage to multiple targets. In my case, that would be Flame Sweep, Deadly Onslaught, and Shatter Slug. Next up, you might have noticed that some damaging abilities will have a yellow fly text, some of them will have a white fly text. Yellow and white damage are the two basic attack types in this game. Everything that's white damage will be either melee or a ranged attack, and everything that's yellow fly text will be either a force or attack attack. In my case, I'm a power attack, so I don't have any force abilities. I use tech damage. The only exception being rabbit shots, which is a ranged attack, and rail shot, which is actually also a ranged attack. In your character screen here, you can see whether you are melee or a ranged character and whether you are a force or a tech character. Next up, there's two damage types in the game. This would be first kinetic and energy damage, which is the most common type and is affected by armor, as you can see here. On the other hand, internal and elemental damage, which is very common on most dot based spec, such as pyro, madness or lethality, ignores defensive stats and is a great tank killer and is not affected by armor. To make matters more complicated, some abilities have different damage types. So Deadly Onslaught, for example, would be a tech ability that does AoE damage, it is channeled, and it does both initial kinetic damage and then later some elemental damage. So now that we've talked about the basics of the different attack and damage types in the game, we can talk about how damage is calculated in this game. The ability damage in this game consists of some base damage, and then different abilities will have different damage coefficients. Right? So Energy Burst will do more damage than Rail Shot, for example. The base damage of the ability is then increased by the bonus damage stat, which is another stat that you have that is affected by Mastery and Power, and in the case of Force and Tech classes, also the Tech Power stat that you get from your offhand. In a nutshell, bonus damage basically just means that you will do bigger hits on average, and it affects both critical hits and normal hits. So. What happens when you're trying to do damage to a target in PvP? So the damage script in this game consists of three consecutive rolls. You can almost think about it like someone rolling a dice. The first roll will be a check of accuracy versus the opponent's defense chance, meaning the game will check whether you hit the opponent or not. Sorcerers and Assassins have a 10% base defense chance. Most other classes have 5%, but there are abilities like Predation that buff this chance by plus 10%. On my power attack right now, I have 101% accuracy, even though I have zero accuracy rating, that is because of the companion buff that I have. And this accuracy chance is now rolled against the defense chance of my opponent. 
meaning I will have a 101% minus 5% if I'm hitting a mercenary, for example, chance to hit them. That means 96% of the time I will hit them with my white damage attack, so rail shot, and then 4% of the time they will dodge it. However, this does not apply to my yellow tech damage attacks, meaning I can expect to always hit them unless there are some defensive cooldowns in play that increase resist chance. If the opponent successfully defends your attack, you will see a flight text message that depends on the attack type that you're using. If the opponent manages to defend your force or tech attack, you will see a message called resist. If your opponent defends against your range attack, you will see a message called dodge. Pay attention to this because if you are missing this first check and your attack will be defended against, that also means that your stuns don't apply. For example, on power attack, your carbonize is a tech ability which can be resisted by some abilities in the game, in which case the enemy will not be stunned. However, if you do manage to stun the enemy, then their defense chance will be reduced to zero, meaning a stunned enemy cannot defend themselves against melee or range attacks. However, they can still resist force or tech attacks even when stunned. Because of that, you can counter defensive cooldowns such as the assassin's deflection by stunning him, and then this deflection and the base 10% defense chance will be negated. So, this is the first of three roles. Secondly, if the attacker meets the accuracy check, then the attack is subject to the second role, which determines whether it is a critical or a normal hit. Critical hit is calculated based on the attacker's critical chance. In my case, this is 40.6%. So I can expect to hit 96% of my white damage attacks against a mercenary, for example. 40.6% of those will be critical hits. The rest will be normal hits. If the attack is a critical hit, the critical multiplier will be applied to it. Meaning that instead of, let's say, 10,000 damage, I will do 67.56% more. So it will be a little less than a 17k hit instead if I crit. Note that the critical check only happens after the accuracy check. So if my attack will be deflected, resisted or parried, all my crit is wasted. This is important if you're playing a class such as Carnage Marauder or Marksman Sniper, which heavily depend on white damage. On these classes, it can make sense to take 5 to 10% accuracy, depending on which targets are in your war zone, and not just stack everything into crit, because again, if you don't hit the target, all of your crit is useless. The final and third role in our damage calculation will be mostly used against tanks. Now, this role will be determining whether the attack will be a hit or a shielded hit. This is based on the defender's shield chance. So if you're hitting a tank, a tank might have up to 50% shield chance. This is the third random role that happens. And if the attack is shielded, the tank will absorb a part of it which is based on the tank's absorb stat. And this can reduce your damage up to 50% in some cases. After these three rolls are done, now damage bonuses, multiplying effects, and the target's mitigation bonuses are applied. These can include effects such as guard, which will reduce the final damage that your target will take, or taunts, which is a debuff applied to you that reduces your damage done by 30%. Finally, the damage is applied to your target, but before that happens, it can be reduced by absorb effects, such as the shield probe of the operative on sniper or the static barrier of the sorcerer. And that's in a nutshell why your Raging Burst Auto Crit sometimes hits for 100k on the sniper, but then again for 30k only on the full mitigation PT tank. We could go more into detail, but these are the basics and I don't want to keep this video too long. So if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Your next question might be, how many of these stats do you need on your gear to do maximum damage? Well, I got you covered there. Check out my other video, which I'm going to link right here. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.